Hey guys, how you going? This is Eddie. Welcome to another challenging thirds problem. Uh, this problem again took me uh, an hour or two, so hopefully you guys don't get it out too quickly. Otherwise, I might seem like a bit of a, an amateur. So have a go at it. Come back when you're ready to see the solutions. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do is obviously follow the hint, so I'm going to find E squared. So if E is equal to that, and um, I'm going to let the first term here equal A, and the second term here equal B. Okay, and if you remember the formula, a minus B squared is equal to A squared minus 2AB. Uh, plus b squared if you remember that formula for expanding hopefully you still remember that otherwise you would have taken a while to expand so e squared is equal to and I have square root of 10 plus square root of x squared uh, minus 2 times square root of a times let me just take a few more steps for this so you don't so you can see what I'm doing 2 times a which is 10 plus square root of x times uh, 10 minus square root of x and then we have uh, plus b squared so that's 10 minus square root of x squared okay so the squared sign and the square root sign will cancel each other out so we have 10 plus square root of x minus and when you have two square roots you can combine them so it becomes square root of uh, 10 plus x 10 plus square root of x bracket 10 minus square root of x and then we have again the squared sign and the square root sign will cancel each other out so this becomes 10 minus square root of x okay so what you can see here is that the square root of x and the minus square root of x will cancel each other out so we're left with um, 10 minus 2 bracket and I'm going to expand this now so 10 by 10 is a hundred uh, square root of x by square root of x is uh, negative uh, x right because I have a minus sign there and that's it the other two expansions cancel each other out so you can try expand it if you want they'll just cancel each other out and then I have uh, a plus 10 on the end so this then becomes 20 minus 2 square root of 100 minus x so that's what e squared is equal to and if I uh, factorize that then this becomes 2 bracket 10 minus uh, square root of um, 100 minus x Okay, so what is our goal? Let's just uh, remind us of our goal here. We're trying to find positive integer values of x that make e an integer. So e has to be an integer. e has to be an integer. And keep track of what the goal is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let... 10 minus square root of 100x 100 minus x I'm gonna let everything in this bracket equal to y okay so what does that mean e squared is equal to 2y okay and because e has to be an integer that means e squared has to be a square number that's gonna give us e Constraint number two. Let's have a look at the value of y. 
and before we look at that let's have a look at the possible values of x now if you have a look at our original condition constraint it said that possible integer values of x so that means x has to be bigger than or equal to um, 1 right because that's what positive integers are and 0 is technically uh, not positive so x has to be bigger than or equal to 1 and x cannot be bigger than a hundred oops what am I doing x cannot be bigger than a hundred alright and what is the reason for that um, the reason for that is because if x was bigger than a hundred then you would have the square root of um, a negative number and that is not going to work so that's our domain and let's have a look at our range now since x the smallest value of x is a uh, hundred sorry the biggest value is a hundred 100 minus 100 is 0, square root of 0 is 0, and 10 minus 0 is 10, so y won't be bigger than 10. Okay, and um, if x was equal to 1, then what's going to happen is we have 10 minus square root of 99 which will give us uh, when x is 1 y is 0 0.05 from the calculator and now let's find some numbers that fit these constraints okay so let's pretend um, e is equal to 1 that will make e squared equal to 1 and then that will make y equal to um, so e is equal to 1 which is equal to 2y so that will make y equal to 1 over 2 right because 2 times a half is equal to 1 now if e was equal to 2 e squared would equal to 4 and that which is 2y so y will equal uh, 4 over 2 which is 2 um, but x has to be an integer here so we're gonna cross some of these out soon e is equal to 3 e squared is equal to 9 and y is equal to 4.5 because 2 times 4.5 is 9 e squared is 16 so you might ask are we going to do this forever and the answer is no because y is going to be bigger than 10 pretty soon so y is 8 and then e is 5 e squared is uh, 25 and y is going to be um, uh, what is y uh, 12.5 so that's gone All right, so it's gonna get bigger so these ones we can cross off right because the values of y are too big in these two lines okay so let's focus on these four and let's cross out the ones that don't fit our x constraint because x has to be an integer All right so let's go back up the top and let's substitute in the values for y and see if it works for this equation so we have 10 minus square root of 100 minus x equals y 
Okay, let's make y equal to a half first. So we have uh, a half equals a half 10 minus square root of 100 minus x. Right, so we have 10 minus a half equals square root of 100 minus x. 9.5 equals square root of 100 minus x. Now 90.25 equals 100 minus x because I've squared the left hand side. And because we have decimal points here, x is not going to be an integer. x does not belong to integer. So therefore, this option is gone. This option is gone. Okay, uh, let's try the second option. So we have... Um, 10 minus square root of 100 minus x is equal to y. And we're going to sub in y is equal to 2. So we're testing the second one right now. We're testing this one right now. So we have y is equal to 2. 100, uh, 10 minus square root of 100 minus x. So 10 minus 2 is a square root of 100 minus x. 8 is equal to the square root of 100 minus x. Uh, square the left hand side. So 64 is equal to 100 minus x. And x is therefore equal to uh, 100 minus 64, which is uh, 36 is equal to 36 and this fits our constraint that x has to be an integer All right so the second line definitely works now let's try the third line and we can almost predict that it's not going to work straight away because y has 4.5 which is decimal but let's try it out. So 10 minus square root of 100 minus x equals 4.5. So 10 minus 4.5 is square root of 100 minus x. 5.5 uh, is equal to... And then let's square the decimal number. So 5.5 squared is 30.25. And uh, we know that x can't be a decimal, so right now x is not an integer, um, so therefore uh, it's dis discarded. Okay, so we can cross out the third line. And now let's test the fourth one. y is equal to 8. So, 10 minus square root of 100 minus x equals 8, because 8 is the value of y. 10 minus 8 equals square root of 100 minus x. 2 equals square root of 100 minus x. 4 is equal to 100 minus x. x equals 96. So this has satisfied our constraint because x is between 1 and 100 and it is an integer so we're gonna tick the fourth one so what are all of our answers let's write all the answers out in one big statement answer when x is equal to um, what was the first one when x is equal to 36 e squared is equal to um, what was it 4 and e is equal to 2 
that was our first answer and the second answer when x is equal to 96 e squared is equal to uh, so what was that um, so here we have y is y is 8 so it's this one here e squared was equal to 16 and e was equal to 4 so these are our two final answers I uh, hope you enjoy the tutorial see you next time